From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. It's Thursday, January 14th, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. We are moving forward with uh, addressing the most at-risk population in the state of Indiana. Thousands more Hoosiers are able to sign up for the COVID-19 vaccine. A look at who is now eligible and the state's plan for vaccinations moving forward. An Indianapolis husband and wife died one day apart after their battle with the coronavirus. We're sharing their story as we go beyond the numbers of this deadly virus. The FBI is tracking potential plans for armed protests across America after President Trump's second impeachment. Working for you, the local efforts to keep everyone safe. And we hope you're hungry. The special event in Hamilton County allowing you to eat some great food and support local businesses all month. Happy Thursday morning, and thanks for tuning in for Good Morning Indiana. I'm Megan Shin, and Raphael, I actually got outside yesterday to get a little sunshine during the day. <laughs> so listen, if it's not going to snow, right, Lauren? We, sh we, we might as well enjoy temperatures right. in the 40s, at time, Todd Clausen. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to have again today. We're going into the 40s, and today is the last day we'll be in the 40s for a little while. So you really need to take advantage of uh, this relatively warmer, I guess we should say milder air for January, not warm air. But anytime you're 10 degrees above normal in the middle of January, it's pretty good. In fact, temperatures this morning above normal as well as we sit in uh, the 30s. Uh, skies are clear right now. Now, no visibility issues for you out there, but the clouds are already quickly starting to stream in. So we're just fine right now with clear skies, but here come the clouds in Illinois and they'll continue to move in our direction. And as far as uh, the precipitation goes, which is mainly rain here, uh, that'll eventually move in here later on uh, this evening. The daytime hours today should be dry. If you do have any plans, you don't have to worry about carrying the rain gear around throughout the course of the day today. The 30s here through about 11 a.m. Then we're into the low 40s by the noon hour and the one o'clock hour. And we'll talk more about the rain showers for tonight and the snow showers for tomorrow. Lauren coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. Let's take a look at your commute this Thursday morning. Here's I-70 and Post Road. This is over on the east side of town. If you look closely in the center of your screen, we do have a, light, a car there with its lights flashing. It looks like some vehicles are slowing down around that. So just use caution. It looks like this is on the ramp system. So just again, east side drivers at I-70 and Post Road. Watch out for that. But other than that, no crashes, no delays to report around central Indiana. Megan. Lauren, thank you. New overnight, police are investigating a shooting on the east side of Indianapolis. It happened around 1.30 on Hoyt Avenue. That's near Sherman Drive and English Avenue. Officers say a man in his early 20s was found shot. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators are working to find out what led up to the shooting. We'll update you as we learn more on their investigation. And thousands more Hoosiers are now eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine, Raphael. That's right, Megan. The Indiana State Department of Health announcing that those ages 70 and older can now register to get the vaccine. State leaders say that their goal right now is to save the most lives possible and to keep people out of the hospital. Hoosiers 70 and older make up 78% of COVID deaths in our state. And right now the state says they're not yet expanding eligibility to people 65 and older or to younger people with health conditions as recommended by the federal government. We're trying to get to everyone as fast as we can, but we're starting with the most at risk of, be of death and uh, of being hospitalized. We just don't know when we're going to get a big bump in our vaccine dosages. Officials say they are planning to add more vaccination sites next week right here in our state. So far, nearly 220,000 Hoosiers have already received their first dose. If you are eligible, you can register for your shot by going to ourshot.in.gov or even easier by calling 211. A caregiver or loved one can make an appointment on your behalf if you're eligible. You can also still get tested for free for COVID-19. You can register at coronavirus.in.gov or by calling 888-634-1116.
Raphael Pharmacy giant CVS says they will be able to give 1 million COVID-19 vaccine shots each day. CVS executives say once the federal vaccine program opens up, pharmacies will be able to widely distribute doses. Currently, CVS is administering vaccines inside of long-term care facilities, but the company says its stores can reach up to 85% of the American population. Walgreens has echoed that goal. They announced that it plans to administer nearly 30 million doses by the end of the summer. Moderna says it is having trouble finding kids to participate in its COVID-19 vaccine trials. The lack of 12 to 17 year old volunteers could potentially delay the age group from getting vaccinated. Although most kids typically don't have severe cases of COVID-19, they can still pass it on. Moderna's vaccine trials for adults brought in 800 volunteers a day. For kids, it's about 800 a month. The study needs at least 30,000 participants to get FDA approval, Lauren. And thousands of Hoosiers continue to be diagnosed with COVID-19 every day. So let's take a look at the latest numbers. The state health department is reporting 3,686 new cases of the virus and more than 574,000 total cases have been reported since the start of the pandemic. 59 more Hoosiers have also died with COVID-19. Some of those deaths date back to mid-December. 8,790 total Hoosiers have died since this pandemic began. And let's take a closer look at the latest county map. It's right here and you can see almost all of Indiana's counties are now in the red. Marion and Boone counties here are among those that return to the highest risk category. Only about 19 counties right now are in the orange category. Raphael. And last, let's take you to Hamilton County where students in the Hamilton Southeastern School District will return to the classroom next week. Right now, all students in that district are learning online. The school board approved allowing students to go to in-person classes starting next Tuesday. The plan will move pre-K through sixth graders to be 100% in person. 7th through 12th graders will begin operating on a hybrid schedule. The district says it will also be holding e-learning Fridays to give teachers time to help students or for scheduled activities. A virtual option is also still available for those who wish to continue learning at home for the rest of the year. Raphael College application deadlines are right around the corner for high school seniors, but the forms will look a little different this year. Due to the pandemic, the SATs and ACTs didn't happen. Community service became tougher to fulfill and extracurriculars were canceled. As a way to try to supplement those things, the common application has added a section for applicants to state how the pandemic has impacted them. Many colleges have also said they will be focusing less on things that were canceled and more on essays grades and letters of recommendation, Lauren. Megan, it is 6.08 on our Thursday. COVID-19 restrictions over the last year have really impacted every Hoosier restaurant. And so in an effort to get folks to support local restaurants, Hamilton County Tourism is hosting the Great Dine Out. WRTV's own Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with all the details. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So the concept of the great dine out is simple. Visit either carry out or dine in to several restaurants there in Hamilton County and be rewarded for it. So we went to the Schoolhouse 7 Cafe in Fishers, one of the participating locations and Crystal Klotfelter, she's the general manager of the cafe and says it's because of their customers they were able to stay open throughout 2020. And she is thankful now that Hamilton County Tourism is backing local restaurants and urging folks to get out and support local spots. Katie Katie Utkin with Hamilton County Tourism says they chose to do this now because restaurant owners have told her they are worried about making it through January. And we already knew 2020 was a really difficult year and they said we're concerned about January and the winter months. Once the holidays are over, but we're still a couple months away from patio weather and spring season, um, they really said January is something we're worried about. So we designed the Great Dine Out. It's a new winter restaurant promotion in Hamilton County going on now through the 31st. Um, and people can take advantage of deals and discounts at almost 40 different local restaurants. So again, you can participate in the Great Dine Out in person or by utilize, utilizing carryout services. They want to make sure everyone is comfortable while still being able to support local. So signing up for this Great Dine Out is easy. All you have to do is go to dineouthamiltoncounty.com and get that passport. It'll be delivered right to your phone. And when you go to these restaurants or coffee shops, you show them your passport, you get that discount. And after you go to five different restaurants in the area, you will be entered to win a $25 gift card to another participating restaurant.
Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you. A van driver who tested positive for COVID-19 says he caught the virus from his job. Coming up, why is raising concerns about conditions for transportation workers? And a consumer alert on this Thursday for Hoosiers getting their stimulus checks in the mail. What officials want you to know so that you don't accidentally throw away your money. But first, let's check on your local forecast with our Todd Clausen. Good morning, TK. Raphael, good morning. It's a dry start to our Thursday across the area, but it's going to end with some rain showers across most of uh, the state. As you see that storm system off to our west. Today we deal with some rain showers later tonight, and then tomorrow we're dealing with some snow showers across the area. We'll break it all down for you coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast. Keller and Keller. Welcome back. The time right now is 614 on your Thursday. Here's a live look at I-465 near Arlington Avenue. This is the southeast side of the loop and you can see traffic is traveling smoothly, both eastbound and westbound. No delays to slow down your drive, but of course we'll keep a close eye on things and keep you updated throughout the morning. So Raphael, a central Indiana man is raising some concerns about his working conditions after he contracted COVID-19. So we want you to meet Randy White of Greenfield. He worked as a van driver for Health Park Hospitality, which provides transportation for Oak Street Health. Randy picked up their patients from their apartments and nursing homes and then drove them back to the clinic and back home. Randy says they were given no eye protection, no shields, and few things to disinfect their vans. He says he was never allowed to ask patients about COVID-19 symptoms. No eye protection whatsoever and she's coughing. I mean, it's a horrible cough. <laughs> and she did not have a mask on. And she said, I told the clinic, I think I have that uh, coronavirus. And I said, I beg your pardon. Randy says he tested positive for COVID-19 back on September the 24th. He quit his job on December the 30th and is now sharing his story with, and with hopes of improving conditions for other van and bus drivers across our state. Now, we did reach out to Oak Street Health about Randy's concerns. The company told us in part, we have investigated the claims regarding COVID-19 procedures and have found no evidence of material deviations from our COVID-19 policies and protocols, which are consistent with guidance from relevant federal and state health authorities and with the recommendations of the medical community. They go on to say these COVID-19 policies and protocols include an extensive standard operating procedure for transportation focused on safety. This encompasses but is not limited to cleaning protocol, driver personal protective equipment protocol, and a thorough notification process for any suspected infections or exposures. In addition, Oak Street Health performs daily COVID-19 symptom screens on all patients, staff, and contractors. Megan? Raphael, a warning this morning about your stimulus check. Officials want to make sure you don't mistake their new payments for junk mail. This comes after some people thought the cards were a scam and threw them away. The IRS says about 8 million people will receive their money in debit cards mailed to their homes. These legitimate debit cards come with white envelopes with a Treasury Department seal. They also have a Visa logo on the front and are issued by MetaBank. Time now is 6.16. Let's get a look at weather with Todd Lawson. All right, as we take a look at your headlines and we break down the day for you. You're going to start off with sunshine here this morning. That is the good news with partly cloudy skies. And then as we get into the afternoon hours, the clouds are going to build. It becomes mostly cloudy. And then this evening is when we're targeting some rain showers to make their way into the area. Temperatures are going to be above normal once again throughout the day. In fact, temperatures already this morning are above a normal. Live look outside. No issues whatsoever. As you take to the roadways here this morning, we are looking at temperatures that range from 30 degrees in Richmond right now to 35 in Bloomington as well as Lafayette. Uh, by the way, big game tonight between the Boilermakers and the Hoosiers. Uh, 33 in Tipton, uh, 32 is the current temperature up in uh, the Peru area. As far as where we're going forward here with temperature wise, notice as soon as the sun comes up, it's a nice steady climb. We have a good amount of sunshine here this morning and that's going to help to bring us up to 40 degrees by the noon hour. Unfortunately though, the clouds are going to increase pretty 
pretty quickly and by this afternoon we're looking at skies that are going to be mostly cloudy. As far as the precipitation goes, most of this is going to hold off until after sunset. That gives you an opportunity uh, to get out and about here uh, throughout the day. Again, we'll lose the sunshine, uh, but temperatures will be about 10 degrees above normal. 42 in Kokomo today, 45 in Lafayette, uh, 45 as well in Indy, 46, a pretty common number. Martinsville to Shelbyville over into the Columbus and uh, Seymour area. And today will be the last day, by the way, of temperatures that will be in the 40s. So take advantage. Tomorrow we're down into the 30s. Temperatures will be dropping and we'll bring in some scattered snow showers off and on uh, during the day tomorrow. And what's going to bring in the colder air is the front tonight with these rain showers. And here's the time. It's 11 o'clock tonight. These rain showers are moving through. Probably looks a little more intense here on TrueCast than it actually will be as these showers make their way through the area. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to be talking uh, about the potential for some uh, light rain. Then tomorrow morning, it's cold enough probably for snow showers across the area and we'll maintain the threat of snow showers off and on uh, throughout the day tomorrow, maybe mixing in spots with uh, some rain showers. You notice how spotty they are though. It's not a solid band of snow coming through. The biggest issue I think honestly is going to be reduced visibility. Some of these snow squalls could be pretty uh, intense and then there'll be some slick spots on the roadways as well. There generally is probably an inch or less of accumulation with some of these snow uh, showers and squalls as they make their way uh, through the area. Saturday and Sunday, we keep some snow showers in the forecast. Uh, that is mainly going to be some lake effect snow that's going to kick in. Uh, Sunday, we'll have to really keep an eye on where that band sets up, I think. And then Monday and Tuesday, still in the 30s with mostly cloudy skies. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks. Here's a look right now at your commute. This is I-465 a little bit north of I-70 over on the east northeast side of town. You can see traffic there is traveling smoothly both northbound and southbound. Right now, no delays to slow down your Thursday commute. Of course, we'll keep you updated, Raphael. The popular app TikTok is making some changes to improve online safety for its younger users. The video app says that moving forward, users under the age of 16 will be set to private by default. That means only their followers can see their videos. They can also only choose their friends or no one at all to comment on their posts. There are also some more specific feature settings for those who are 16 and 17 years old. TikTok users, as you know, must be 13 or older to have an account. So Walmart is testing out a new way to keep your groceries refrigerated during their doorstep delivery, and they're calling it a smart box. It's a smart cooler that is temperature controlled so they can be placed outside of a customer's door and has three different temperature zones to accommodate frozen, refrigerated, and pantry items. Walmart is teaming up with contactless home delivery company Home Valet on the project. They plan to begin testing this in Arkansas this spring. A third stimulus check could be coming in the near future, but there might be a lot more catches this time around. What you need to know so you don't waste your money. The singer-songwriter Hunter Hayes is out with a new single this morning, and coming up on GMA on WRTV, you can be among the first to hear that new song. Hayes will be live to talk about his upcoming album, Red Sky Part 2, and he'll perform his song, The One Who Got Away. Let's head outside right now on this Thursday morning. A big good morning to Lebanon, Lawrence, and LaPelle, all great places to call home here in central Indiana. You're watching Good Morning Indiana on WRTV. Galleries live life comfortably. Welcome back. It is 624 on this Thursday. Megan, Raphael, it's time we talk about what's trending at 6. So, Raphael, why don't you kick us off? Listen, if you're going to go out into space, whether the moon or Mars, you should have with you two things, right? An adult beverage and a bag of barbecue chips. Oh, yeah. SpaceX's Dragon Capsule is back on Earth with some unusual cargo. It splashed down last night and it was carrying mm -mm -mm, two bottles of wine and 320 grapevines. It turns out a European startup named Space Cargo Unlimited had them launched into space. The wine and grapes were part of an experiment to see how the microgravity and exposure impacted them. Researchers believe this study could unlock the future of agriculture and climate change on Earth. Sign me up to be a wine farmer anywhere in space. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or ready. a wine taster. 
All trying. <laughs> All right. Well, Barbie has released the latest addition to its inspiring women's series. Dr. Maya Angelou Dahl is dressed in a head wrap and floral printed dress. Barbie says that the women of the series were risk takers mm -hmm. who, quote, changed rules and paved the way for generations of girls to dream bigger than ever before. Angelou's career includes a National Book Award nomination, dozens of honorary doctorates, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Shipments of the dolls will start next month. That's Barbie, awesome. there's like okay. so many options yeah. now if you're ever, you know, buying for my niece or whatever. It's pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Love and I, I love how they're diversifying it. It's great. Yeah. Show some woman. Um, and here's a strange new invention, you guys. It's a furry robotic cat. But you'll notice it has no what? head or legs. Ooh, what? Just a pillow body. <laughs> the moving tail. The product product is called Kobu. And it is showcased at the virtual electronic nope. show. While it may seem creepy, nope. it's actually designed to yes. be calming and therapeutic. Nope. It's just straight the lady creepy. <laughs> I like it. I'll take a real cat. <laughs> it's like a ball of fur with a <laughs> moving tail. tail. Oh, I mean, it's like a pillow pet. pet. You know, a pillow pet's an exception. That'd be fun. Fine, but that is just That's weird. Get a chia Ooh. pet. A chia pet yeah. will be easier. Chia pet. <laughs> yeah. How about just a pillow? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, at least I know what I'm getting Raphael for Christmas no. this year. Yeah. Already, already oh, in January. <laughs> Mrs. Sanchez is going to... The, love that. Gonna love <laughs> that roaming around the house. All right, outside right now, temperatures are in the 30s. It's not bad. Uh, Temperature-wise, outside right now, anywhere from 30 to 35 degrees. Temperatures today will be right around 40 by the noon hour. We start off with some sunshine today, but as the day goes on, uh, we'll see the clouds increase. And eventually by this afternoon, it's going to be overcast. Uh, but temperatures still in the mid-40s, very, very similar to yesterday afternoon. Once we get past 6 p.m., which you see there with the temperature of 41 degrees. We will bring some light rain showers into the forecast. So if you do have plans tonight, you will have to deal with a couple rain showers moving through. Then tomorrow, Megan, we are dealing with snow showers. More on both the rain and the snow coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Thanks, Todd. Well, many Americans have received their $600 stimulus check, and a third one could be on the way. Consumer reporter John Matarese explains what the next round could include so you don't waste your money. It's looking more and more likely we may soon see a third stimulus check, and that one could be the biggest of all, but it may come with some more catches. President-elect Joe Biden is rolling out his plan for another stimulus to pick up where those $600 stimulus checks left off. Kipling, your personal finance says he may have enough support in Congress after Inauguration Day to push through the much-anticipated $2,000 checks that fell through on New Year's Eve. But it says most likely the third check would be for $1,400 because most of us just got $600. And that would make the total figure $2,000. Kiplinger says the new Congress is also likely to increase the amount for children and finally take away the college student loophole so that 18 to 21 year olds would get a check for the first time. However, the report says the phase out threshold may be lowered even more so that you might get less money starting at just $50,000 in income. Look for Congress to be debating a third stimulus on January 21st and help for families could come quickly. So always don't waste your money. I'm John Matters. Good morning, Indiana. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now on Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday morning, this is your 630 news feed. The death of an infant from Grant County on Christmas Eve has now been ruled a homicide. Police were called to a home at West South J Street and Evans Road in Gas City on that day. They found two-month-old Atlas Kirkland dead at the scene. The Grant County Coroner's Office now says the boy's death was a homicide. So far, no arrests have been made in this case. Governor Holcomb has proposed a modest increase in funding for schools in the next two years. The governor's proposed budget would increase K-12 through school funding by 2% next year and by 1% in the second year of that two-year budget. The governor says tax collections have stabilized since falling last year because of the pandemic. Still no comment from the Pacers on reports that Victor Oladipo is on his way out of Indy. On Wednesday, ESPN reported that the Pacers traded Oladipo to the Houston Rockets as part of a, of a four-team deal. The Pacers would acquire guard Karis Levert. He will join the Pacers from the Brooklyn Nets. There have been long reports that Oladipo has been wanting to get out of Indiana. He is set to be a free agent after the current season.
And former Colts head coach Chuck Pagano is retiring from football. He announced that decision yesterday. Pagano was the Colts head coach, as you may recall, from 2012 all the way through 2017. He led the team to the AFC Championship game in 2014. Pagano will most notably be remembered for his battle with leukemia during his first season as the head coach of the Colts. Pagano spent the last two seasons as the Bears defensive coordinator. We wish him all the very best. He was such a good guy and so served Central Indiana well. But to you on this Thursday, good morning and welcome to Good Morning Indiana. And Raphael, Megan said she got outside yesterday with the sunshine. It was nice driving oh, yeah. home in the sunshine. So Todd, you're the man uh, of the hour. What can we expect oh, today for our Thursday? Pre pressure's on here, huh? Pressure's yeah. on. Well, I think uh, today we'll have some sunshine to start. Uh, eventually, though, the clouds are going to win out. Temperature-wise, though, we won't be bad later on this afternoon. So you definitely can get out and about and do any of those outdoor activities. It's just not going to be as bright later on today as it was uh, the past two days. 33 right now in Indy, 35 from uh, Lafayette to Bloomington. Clear skies for everybody this morning, although the clouds are starting to increase already. Uh, they're coming in pretty quickly, so our sunshine here this morning may be fairly short-lived, uh, but these are just some high thin clouds first, and then uh, the more solid overcast uh, sky will start to build in later on uh, this afternoon. You notice this precipitation. I wouldn't really worry about this in uh, parts of Missouri, but this batch here, that is going to be heading our way uh, later on tonight. So after about 6, 7 o'clock, we'll bring in the chance of some spotty rain showers to the forecast. But until then, just increasing clouds, mid to upper 40s as we work our way into the afternoon hours. And there you see the shower chance come in uh, once we get past 7 o'clock. So if you do have evening plans tonight, you may want to have the umbrella handy. We'll talk about the rain and then the snow for tomorrow coming up in main weather in just a couple minutes. Lauren. All right, Todd, traffic is picking up right here. This is I-465, a little west of State Road 37 to our southwest. You can see everything is still traveling up to speed, but a lot of headlights out that way on that side of the loop. We'll continue to keep you updated if there are any major slowdowns or crashes out there to slow you down, Megan. Lauren, thank you. Ahead of next week's inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden, we're learning more about safety precautions authorities are taking here at home. The FBI has warned about protesters possibly carrying guns and other weapons at every state capitol leading up to next Wednesday's inauguration. The superintendent of Indiana State Police addressed those concerns. It will be all hands on deck, I can assure you. We have a very strong relationship with the Indiana National Guard with the Department of Homeland Security, both at the state level and the federal level, federal agencies. Many, many uh, meetings have occurred with the IMPD, with our intelligence folks, and I think we're well positioned. Um, but it's certainly my hope that, that what we do have positioned doesn't have to be visible. We also reached out to intelligence expert William Foley with IUPUI. He's worked for the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Defense in the past. He says paying attention to online chatter and other intelligence is key. There's eight signs of a terrorist event, but the really thing what you're looking for is you're looking for uh, threat, intent, and capability. You win these battles with intelligence, and um, intelligence basically comes from two, really three levels, federal, regional, and local. IMPD and the National Guard declined our requests for interviews on possible protests next week. They did send us a statement, though. You can read those on WRTV, the app. Megan, the new Indiana Attorney General is facing criticism for his response to the riots in Washington, D.C. last week. Republican Todd Rokita was one of only four state attorneys general who refused to sign a national letter condemning the attack on the U.S. Capitol. That letter was sent by the National Association of Attorneys General. Instead, Mr. Rokita and three other Republican officeholders signed a separate letter criticizing what they called a culture war that is heating up rapidly. Those are their words. Rokita wrote that he believes all violence should be condemned, and the letter he signed specifically mentions the unrest that grew out of some of last year's protests over police brutality. Well, Raphael, if all goes as planned, a big migration from downtown Indianapolis to the southeast side will be underway this time next year. The city's new criminal justice campus is starting to take shape. The 12-story complex will be at the southeastern avenue and east Pleasant Run Parkway North Drive, about three miles from the downtown area. The land was once a Citizens Energy Coke manufacturing plant. Barring any delays, the new courthouse and Marion County Jail are scheduled to open at the complex by late 2022. 
Our digital reporter Tom McCabe has a rundown of the current state of this construction project. You can read that full timeline right now on the WRTV News app and also at WRTV.com. Megan. Thanks, Lauren. Trying to bring back business to restaurants. Next, a live report on how Hamilton County wants to let you, let someone else cook for you. Plus, the bonus you could pick up along the way with your dinner. That's right after the break. On 411 to learn more. Welcome back. So COVID-19 restrictions over the past year have impacted every Hoosier restaurant in some way. Mm -hmm. It's also led to a number of efforts to bring customers back and just keep those businesses alive, Megan. That's right, Lauren. And Hamilton County Tourism is leading one of those efforts right now. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning with more on the Great Hamilton County Dine Out. Good morning, Kelsey. Hey, good morning. So the Great Dine Out is a new concept in Hamilton County this year, and the premise is simple. Visit local restaurants, get a discount while you're there, and then once you reach five restaurants, you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to another restaurant, and they tell me they have hundreds of gift cards to give away. So I stopped into Schoolhouse 7 Cafe, one of the locations that's participating in the Great Dine Out. We got you all taken care of. Okay, schoolhouse so 7 Cafe is, is in its second year of service. The old schoolhouse turned coffee shop has been a hit in Fishers since it opened. My vision was for it to be like Cheers, where everybody comes in and we know your name and we know your drink. Crystal Klotfelter is the general manager of the cafe and says it's because of their customers they were able to stay open through 2020. Our word um, of the pandemic has been to pivot. So we're just learning different ways to make sure our customers are taken care of. We take pride in our customer service. We've been very blessed by all of you guys to remain open during the whole pandemic. Whether you sit inside and enjoy your cup of joe, your total's gonna be 728 at the window. Thank you. Or get it on the go, Klotfelter is thankful for the support. So good to see so many of our smiling faces and, lo and loyal customers come back to us and we know that they're safe and that they are healthy and it's just been a blessing. And she says the blessings keep coming as Hamilton County Tourism is backing their businesses with the great dine out. We know this is a really challenging time and we want to applaud all of the servers and wait staff and back of house staff who are working their tails off to you know, keep their businesses open. Katie Utkin works for the organization and says they started this because restaurant owners said they were worried about getting through the month of January. It's a new winter restaurant promotion in Hamilton County going on now through the 31st um, and people can take advantage of deals and discounts at almost 40 different local restaurants. She says once you hit five local stops, you could win a $25 gift card to another restaurant. We have a lot to give away. We're going to hope to fulfill as many as possible to make sure people who did all those five check-ins get rewarded. Knowing that they want their businesses to succeed during this hard time is just so heart, heart touching. So at Schoolhouse 7 Cafe, if you have that passport on your phone, you can get 20% off any drink, excluding alcohol. And then again, once you get those five restaurants, you're entered to win one of those $25 gift cards. So to get your passport, you can just head to dineouthamiltoncounty.com. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you so much. A couple hoping to get their COVID vaccine together. And now the family and friends who are heartbroken. Coming up, a closer look behind the numbers at the human side of the pandemic. But first, your local forecast. And Raphael, an area of low pressure is going to be changing things here across central Indiana. We've enjoyed temperatures in the 40s, which we will do again uh, today. But this area of low pressure will bring first some rain, then some snow, and quite a bit of wind into central Indiana as we work our way into the weekend. We'll break it all down for you coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast. America's number one Tempur-Pedic retailer. Welcome back. They were hoping to get their COVID vaccine together. Unfortunately, they never got the chance to do so, Raphael. And now their families and friends are talking about the legacy that they leave behind. Ernest and Ann Wilkins loved each other, and that connection was felt by family and friends. I'm very heartbroken. Um, Because I, I loved Anne and Ronald, just like my brother and sister. And I want people to take this serious. Ernest battled diabetes and cancer. 
The couple was diagnosed with COVID-19 in December. They were admitted to St. Vincent Hospital and placed on ventilators. They never left the hospital. Ernest died on Friday and on Saturday. Too much for one family. Too much for a long list of friends. She uh, was deeply committed to her profession and to her fellow educators. The IPS superintendent took this picture with Anne after learning they shared a birthday in May. Anne was a teacher with IPS for 13 years and then became a union leader, always promoting public school education. I think what she did well was sort of holding everybody to account because at the end of the day, her goal is to make sure kids were getting served well. As a kid, Ernest loved playing the trumpet. He graduated from Short Ridge High School, Ball State, and retired from Allstate. He loved sports and knew his stats. And every day, he was on the phone with the man that he knew as a child at School 43. And that's what we thought of each other, you know, is that we were brothers and we did everything together. We talked 10 times a day. If I woke up first in the morning, I would call him. If he woke up first in the morning, he'd call me. And on during the day, we would talk, I know, 10 times a day. The couple had many plans for this new year, including getting the COVID vaccine. The cruelty of the moment stings, but the promise of their heavenly rise brings comfort to those who are heartbroken. I would rather you have a reaction to the vaccine than to try to fight COVID, the disease, because a lot of times you won't win. And it's real. I've seen it for myself, and it's something that I don't want to see again. Those who knew Ernest would call him Ronald. All his friends called him Ronald. But today, Ernest and Anna Wilkins will be remembered and will be laid to rest in a private funeral right here in Indianapolis. Our condolences to their families and friends. It is now time to check your local forecast here in central Indiana. Todd, Todd what are we looking at today? You know, temperatures once again today, Raphael, are going to be above normal. Anytime you can do that in the middle of January, that's something obviously that's a good thing outside right now. It's pretty quiet. We'll have some sunshine here uh, to start our day. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to keep that sunshine uh, throughout the entire day as the clouds will eventually start to win out. Uh, we've dipped down now into the 20s there in Richmond at 29 degrees, 34 in Greencastle, Crawfordsville at 33 degrees, as is Indianapolis. And temperatures today will warm pretty quickly here this morning with some sunshine out there. In fact, by 11 a.m., we're looking at a temperature of 38 degrees. By the noon hour, we're touching the 40 degree mark. And then the clouds will start to thicken up throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. Uh, but not before temperatures get up to right around 44, 45 for your afternoon high. The daytime hours today, it will be dry. It's not until after sunset tonight that will start to bring the potential uh, for some rain showers into this forecast. And here come the clouds already. They're moving pretty quickly uh, out of Illinois. First some high clouds and then eventually uh, we will start to see the thicker overcast skies uh, take hold. And then eventually that precipitation will start to head our way. Uh, now this is going to be just plain old rain this evening. Here we are at 7 o'clock right above my head. And that's the rain starting to come in. So again, it's after sunset. So if you have evening plans tonight, you may want to have the umbrella handy. Otherwise, you should be in decent shape. The rain will be fairly light as it comes through fairly quickly, but it's also going to bring in some colder air and that'll bring an end to our temperatures in the 40s and we'll transition into a pretty winter like pattern starting tomorrow and then going into the weekend throughout the day. Tomorrow we'll be dealing with some spotty snow showers. It's not going to be a big storm system for us or not a storm system where everybody's going to pick up accumulating snow. But if you do get caught in some of these snow showers, I do think visibility is probably going to be the biggest issue for us uh, going forward as we work our way throughout the course of Friday and then even as we get into the weekend and some lake effect snow showers uh, making their way uh, through the area and obviously some slick spots will be a possibility as well anytime uh, you are dealing with snow. I do think the roads could get covered in spots pretty quickly as some of this uh, snow makes its way into the area. It's not a big snow event for us. Generally an inch or less of a snow accumulation uh, as you would see.
could see there uh, across uh, the area. And then as we work our way into the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to depend on the winds. Saturday gets pretty windy for us across the area with some additional snow showers and some of those with the wind strong enough may drift all the way down into central Indiana coming off of Lake Michigan. So it's more of a lake effect snow uh, shower activity on Saturday and Sunday with temperatures that'll be hovering right around uh, the freezing mark. And then as we get into next week, still a little chilly with temperatures, Lauren, that'll be in the mid to upper 30s. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look at your commute right now as you're heading out the door this Thursday morning. Here's a live look to our west I-70 near Ronald Reagan Parkway near the Indianapolis International Airport. Traffic here is traveling smoothly both eastbound and westbound along your interstate. No crashes, no delays around central Indiana to slow down your drive. Of course, we'll keep you updated if we monitor any trouble spots. <laughs> All right, so it is Thursday, and that's the day we open up the WRTV vault for our throwback story. And today we're looking back at a crisis. Raphael, it dominated the news for a better part of two years, and it finally came to an end 40 years ago this month. Yeah, Lauren, on the same day that Ronald Reagan became the 40th president of the United States, 52 American hostages were released by Iran. They had been held captive for 444 days after the U.S. Embassy in Tehran was overrun. Among the hostages who were freed was Rick Kupke of Francisville, Indiana. He had already been reunited with his parents at West Point, New York. But then it was on to Washington, D.C. for a reunion with other family members and a visit with former WRTV reporter Ken Nelson. It's probably one of the dumber questions I could ask, but after all of the things that you have gone through, how do you, how do you feel today? Well, of course, tired. I was very surprised at the reception. I, we had a, a good taste of it from when, when we flew into West Point, but uh, American people are just unbelievable. I remember that day in history, and the American people are unbelievable. The Cupkey family was later escorted by Indiana State Police back to the family's farm in Francisville. You can see more of this emotional story right now at WRTV.com slash history. Mm, what a moment. Love those throwbacks. Thank you, Raphael. And more gunfire in the city. Next, an update on this breaking news from overnight, plus more of your top stories this Thursday morning. You're watching Good Morning Indiana on WRTV. WRTV. Welcome back. It is 654 and here is a live look at traffic this morning on I-465 and Brookville Road. A live look on the east side of town. Traffic here is moving along up to speed as you can see in all directions. Just be aware if you are traveling on Brookville Road near this area, we have an ongoing construction project between 465 and County Road 600 West. I don't think it's slowing down traffic too much this morning. We do want to thank you for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. Get ready to see some snow around central Indiana once again. Todd Gloss is going to tell us just how much we can all expect coming up. But first, Megan, let's get a look at our top stories. Yeah, Lauren, we continue to follow breaking news from overnight. Police are still investigating a shooting on the east side. It happened around 1.30 this morning on Hoyt Avenue. That's near Sherman Drive and English Avenue. Officers say one victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Students at Hamilton Southeastern Schools will return to the classroom next week. The school board approved allowing in-person classes starting on Tuesday. The plan means that pre-K through 6th graders will be in person 100% of the time. 7th through 12th graders will begin, of course, on a hybrid schedule next week. And the IRS wants to make sure that you don't mistake your stimulus payment for junk mail. About 8 million people will receive their money in debit cards mailed to their homes. That's in addition to the people who will get physical checks. So the IRS says that some people thought the mailings were a scam and they threw them away. The legitimate debit cards come in white envelopes with a Treasury Department seal. So keep an eye out for those if you're still waiting for your stimulus check. All right, Todd, let's talk snow. Uh, we're, yeah, we're not talking about a ton. <laughs> 
sun is snow heading <laughs> in our direction, but we are going Thank to transition you. back to a little more of a wintry pattern. Uh, today's a good day, though. 44 degrees. I know the clouds are going to increase. It becomes mostly cloudy, but it's dry until this evening, and that's when some rain showers uh, develop across the area. Tomorrow, some rain and snow showers, an inch or less of accumulation tomorrow. Visibility, though, could be reduced on the roadways as some of these isolated snow showers come through. Then additional snow showers over the weekend uh, as the lake effect a snow machine kicks in across parts of central Indiana. Temperatures will be chilly this weekend with highs that'll be only uh, right around 32 to 33 degrees. All right, I'm ready for a little snow. Thanks, Todd. We're back in 25 minutes and throughout Good Morning America with news, weather, and traffic updates. And remember, all your news can be found throughout the day. Just go to the WRTV mobile app. I want to thank you for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana. We'll leave you a live look. Still dark out there over the Circle City. We hope you have a great Thursday.